how you do, let's get going with some fluency then. So yesterday, what we were looking at is uh, we were looking at what happened when we chose a number and we tried to work out how far away that number was from the next multiple of 10. So you can see here that we've got the number 18. So let's find 18 on our 100 square. Now, to start with, what we were doing is we were identifying that multiple of 10 that came after our number. So in this case, it is 20. So we can see that 18 has got one 10 and the next 10 after it is 20. Um, and then what we were doing is we were using our 100 square to count the places that it was away from that next multiple of 10. So we said, well, 18 is one, two away from 20, which is its next multiple of 10. But then we noticed something about our numbers and something that we already knew that could help us with this. So we said that, well, 18, yes, it's got one 10. That means the next full 10 after that would be two 10s. But 18 has got one, as so it's got eight ones. Now, what we noticed when we counted was that it was one, two away from that next multiple of 10. So what we're noticing here is we're noticing that our ones, so those eight ones, bonds with two to take us from one 10 to two tens. So what we're saying is instead of counting the number of places to that next multiple of 10, what we can actually do is look at the ones within our number, see whether we're going from two tens to three tens. Yep, so two tens to the next multiple of 10, which is three tens. Well, what bonds with eight to get me to that next whole 10? Two. So we, we're noticing that eight and two bond to make that whole 10. And that takes us from two tens to three tens. What about this one then? 38 add what? equals 40. Well, hopefully you will have noticed that 38 has got eight ones and we want to go from three tens to four tens. So we're going to that next multiple of 10. So what bonds with eight to get me that next whole 10? Well, it's two like all the others. So well done if you got that right. Okay, have a go at these then. Pause the video and have a go we're going from 16 to 20. So we're going from one number to the next multiple of 10 from that number. Great, I hope you've had some time to have a go at that. Let's go through the answers then. So we know that 16 has got one 10 and we're trying to get to two 10. So that next multiple of 10 along, 16 has got six ones. What bonds with those six ones to complete that 10 and take us to that next whole 10? Four. So 24, 24 has got two tens. We're trying to get to 30. So the next whole 10 from two tens is three tens. We've currently got four ones. How many ones do I need to add to that to complete that 10? Well, four and six bond to make 10. So 24 add six equals 30. So 49, that's got four tens. You can see that we're trying to get to five tens. That next multiple of 10 along, it has got nine ones. And what bonds with nine to make a whole 10? One. And then we've got 57. 57 has got five tens. We're trying to get to the next whole 10, which would be six tens, 60. And 57 has got seven ones. And what bonds with seven to make that whole 10? Three. And then 75, you can see that we've got seven tens here and we're trying to get to 80 or eight tens. How many ones do we currently have? Five. What bonds with five to complete that 10? Another five. So 75 add five is equal to 80. Well then, if you got those right. Okay, continuing with our lesson on time then. So what type of clock is this? What do we call this? It's not a digital clock, it's an 
Well, the piggy said that it's an analog clock. Now, what does that big hand tell us? We've got two ways of measuring time. We've got minutes and hours. What about this big hand? Does it tell us the minutes or the hours? Great, well done. It tells us the minutes. And that means that our small hand tells us the hour. What do we call it when the big hand points straight up over that 12? What time do we call it? That's right, we say o'clock. That is the start of the hour, we say o'clock. What about when this big hand moves to the opposite side? It's now gone halfway round the full hour. What do we call it when the big minute hand points down at the six? That's right, we say half past. Fantastic. And what about when our big hand points straight to the right over that three? What do we call this time? Well, it's a quarter of the way past the hour. So we say quarter past. Super. And then what about when it's on the other side and it's directly to the left over that nine? What do we call this time? Well, again, it's a quarter of the way to the next hour. So we call this time quarter two. And don't forget, with each time, we need to look at that red hand and either see what it has gone past or see what it's going to in the case of quarter two. Great, so like we said yesterday, we can split our clock in half. So when that minute hand is on the yellow side, it means that that minute hand is actually the closest to the o'clock that it has just gone past. So because it's closer to the hour that it has just gone past at this point, we call it minutes past. Fantastic. So let's have a look at this. We're not going to look at this minutes two. We'll look at that tomorrow. This was there from our learning yesterday where we were looking at quarter two. Today we're just going to be looking at this minutes past. So what I want you to do is I want you to have a go at counting. So let's say this is zero, one, two, and I want you to count these dashes until we get to the next big dash here. So if you can just see this, you can see quite a big dash here and quite a big dash here. And I'd like to count how many dashes away it is from this one, zero, to this one. Have you done that? Great, well hopefully you said that it's one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So this would be five minutes. Remember these dashes around the edges show us five, show us our minutes. So here we can see that this big dash here means five minutes. What about this one then, this space here, I just move. Oh, that gonna look? What about if I highlight this, for example? Now this space. How many from this big dash to this big dash? Have a go at counting. Well, hopefully you've noticed it's one, two, three, four, five again. So this means that five minutes have gone by. If Five more minutes have gone by. Well, that's five and five. So together, how many minutes have gone by? Great, ten. Now this one we know is quarter past. So there are 60 minutes in the hour. And this is a quarter of the way through. So a quarter of 60 is 50. So we would say quarter past at this point. And you might notice five. 10, 50, it's counting in our fives. Well done if you spotted that. And that's because within each of these spaces here, so from this big dash to this big dash here, where these numbers are, so from 12 to the one, when the big hand moves from here to here, that means five minutes have gone by. So let me stretch this big blue hand, there we go. So when that hand goes from there to there, that means five minutes have gone by. When the big hand goes from there to there, that means five more minutes have gone by. When the big hand moves from there to there, 
that means five more minutes have gone by. How many minutes have gone past when I move from there to there? Well done if you said five more minutes. So at this point, we've had five, 10, 15, 20 minutes go by, well done. And what about if we move it to the next one? So from there to there. Well, another five minutes have gone by. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Well done if that's what you said. And five more than 25, when it gets to here, is 30, fantastic. And you might notice that at half past, 30 is half of 60. I remember in that whole hour, there are 60 minutes. So hopefully by this point, you will have noticed that between each of these big numbers, so between the 12 and the one, between the one and the two, between the two and the three, there is always five dashes. And those dashes represent the minutes. So what we do then is every time that big hand moves from the 12 to the next number, five minutes have passed. So from here, which is zero, because that's the beginning of the hour, we need to count in fives to work out how many minutes past the hour it has gone. So let's move our clock. Let's say it is 12 o'clock. There we go, it's 12 o'clock. So now it has moved from the 12 to the one. So we say it is, five past 12. Now another five minutes have gone by so we say it is 10 past 12. Now another five minutes have gone by now we could say 15 minutes past 12 but we don't say that here what do we say when it's pointing over the three? Well done if you said that we say quarter past. I've got a little left there to remind us. And then five more minutes go past. So when this big blue hand is pointing over the four, we say it is 20 past 12. Now remember, all of these here are minutes past. So five past, 10 past, quarter past, 20 past. And when that big minute hand is pointing to um, the five, we know that if we counted these minutes, 25 minutes will have gone past. So this would be 25 past 12. You could say 25 past, or you could say 25 minutes past. Same for this, you could say five past or five minutes past. It doesn't matter whether you say the minutes or not. Okay, and let's have a look then. Let's move this to here. Okay, what time is it? Well, if we look at our minute hand, we can see that it is on the two. So that means from here, which is zero, five, ten minutes have gone past. So we say it's ten past, because remember, we always start counting from the o'clock. So it's ten past or ten minutes past. And then we have to look at our hour hand. Which hour has it gone past? It's gone past nine, so it's ten past nine. What time is this? Okay, what time is it? Well, hopefully you've noticed that the big minute hand is pointing over the four. So if we start counting from here, we know five, 10, 50, 20 minutes have passed until this point. So we say it's 20 past or 20 minutes past. And then we need to look at our hour hand to see it has gone past the six. So we say 20 past six or 20 minutes past Okay, let's have a little bit more practice with that then. So these clocks are showing us a time and we've got to match the clock face with the written time. So let's have a look. This one here, we can see 
that the minute hand is pointing over the four. So if we start counting from 12, because that's where the hour starts, this is essentially our zero. And remember, each one of these big numbers here, these big dashes, which line up next to our big numbers, they represent five minutes each. So we count in fives until we get to our uh, minute hand. So we go zero, five, 10, 15, 20. So we know that 20 minutes have gone past the o'clock here. So 20 past, and then we look at our our hand, which number has it gone past? It's gone past the 12. So it's 20 past 12 or 20 minutes past 12. And we can see that one is over here. Why don't you have a go at pausing the video and see if you can work out the rest of them and then we'll go through the answers together. Great, hopefully you've done that. Let's go through them. So remember, we always start counting from the own block. So this is our zero and we're going to count in fives from that until we get to our minute hand. So zero, five, well done, remember. It's five minutes between each of these big numbers. So from here to the one, only five minutes have gone past. So we say five minutes past or five past. And then we need to look at the hour hand. Which hour has it just gone past? Well, we can see that it has just gone past the nine. So it's five past nine. This one here. Well done if you got that one right. And again, let's count in our fives. Remember, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So this is where my big uh, minute hand is. It's 25 minutes past or 25 past. And then we need to look at our, um, our hand. It has gone past the six. So we say it's 25 past six or 25 minutes past six. And then this one, when it only leaves us this, let's check if it's right. So this is zero from 12, counting in our fives. We have five, ten. So this is ten minutes past, and it's gone past the five. So ten past five, or ten minutes past five. Well done if you got those right. Okay, now it's time to write the time. So again, why don't you have a go at pausing the video and seeing if you can um, work out the times if you're ready for that. If you want to watch me do the first two and then have a go at the rest yourself, that's absolutely fine. If you just want to watch me, that is also fine. So looking here then, we start counting from the 12. So as long as we're counting that minute hand first, that's all that really matters. And we're counting in fives. So from zero, we count five, 10, 15, 20. So it's 20 past or 20 minutes past. If you want to as well, you could also write 20 past, if that's easy for you. Probably better if you try to write it in words though. So we've got 20 past. Now we need to look at the um, hour hand. Which hour has it gone past? It's gone past the one. So we can say 20 past one. Or we could say, 20 past one. So either of those is fine. Let's have a look at that second one then. So starting with our minute hand, where's our minute hand? Well, we can see it is five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes past. So again, you could write that as, 25 past, or you could write 25 minutes past if you want, or you could write 25 past. Either is correct. So 25 past, now it's time to look at the hour. Which hour has it gone past? It's gone past 11. 
So 25 past 11. Okay, now's probably a good time to pause the video if you still want to have a go at some independent practice when it's last two, um, and then play it again and we'll go through it together. Okay, let's go through our answer. So we've got um, the minute hand, starting from our 12, we've got five. So five minutes past. So again, we can write five past, five minutes past, or we could write five past, or five minutes past. Uh, now we need to look at the hour. Which hour has it gone past? It has gone past the two. So we say it's five past two, or we can say five past two. Um, then we've got our last one, start counting from 12, which is our zero in terms of minutes. So we have five, 10. So 10 minutes have gone past, so we call this time 10. Call this time 10 past. Either is correct, we write it as a word or a number. Now we need to look at the hour. Which hour has it gone past? We can see it has gone past the three. So we say 10 past three or 10 past Well done if you got those right. Okay, time to draw the hands on ourselves. So, just like before, if you want to pause the video here and go straight for having to go by yourself, that's fine. If you want to watch me do the first two, let's get started. So we can see the first one says five past seven. So remember, five past. That's the bit that's telling us the minutes. So the minute hand is the big hand. So what I'll do, I'll just use black hands for this one. So this is zero. So we want five past. So we count zero, five. So that means our big hand will be pointing over the one here. So now it's five past. Remember it's past seven. So that's seven is telling us the hour that it has gone past. So we need to draw our, our hand just a little bit past the seven, only a tiny bit past. Okay, 25 past five. So from 12, which is zero, we would have five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So at this point it's 25 past. Which which hour has it gone past? It's gone past the five. So on our hour hand we need to show that the small hand has gone past the five then. Remember um, clocks move clockwise so the arrow only moves this way around. That direction we call clockwise because that's the direction that clock moves in. There we go, 25 past. Again, have a go pause the video, finish in the last two by yourself and then come back to the video to see my answers. Okay, lovely. So 10 past 10. Well, this part here, 10 past, tells us the hour. So we can see 12 would be zero, because we're only straight up is where our hour begins. So in terms of minutes, that's zero. And then we count in our fives on each of those big numbers. So five, 10. So we have 10 past here. So 10 minutes past or 10 past. Now let's look at the hour. Which hour has it gone past? It's gone past the 10. So we find 10 and we just put our arrow a little bit past it and then 20 past 11 well 20 past shows our minutes so the minutes here start at 0 5 10 15 20 25 oh, I went past it I didn't read it correctly 20 past so let's do that again 0 5 10 15 20 25 
five, ten, fifteen, twenty. There we go. And if you mistake, make a mistake like me, then it's fine. You can just reset and just count back from the zero. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, so twenty past tells us our minutes. Let's look at the number twenty past eleven. So our hour hand is just a bit past eleven. Well done if you got those right. Okay, we got a true or false question here then. So true or false that this clock is showing us two past seven. Two past seven. Okay, have we had some uh, thoughts about this? So let's work out the time systematically and then hopefully we can try to spot um, any mistakes that may have happened. So looking at the minutes first, so let's look at our minute hand. We start from here, which is zero minutes, and then each one of these big dashes, which lines up with our big numbers, represents that another five minutes have passed. So this is zero, we say five, 10. So we would say 10 past. But this person thought it was two past. Why did they think it was two past? What mistake did they make? Well, well done if you spotted that they have written down this number here. Now we've got to remember that all these numbers here, they don't show us the minutes, they show us the hours. So if you write two past, then this doesn't show us two minutes. This is for the hour hand. It's actually these little dashes around the edges that show us our minutes. And remember, if we count all these little dashes, by this point, we will have counted 10. So this shows us 10 past. So we can say that we know it is false because the minute hand shows us 10 minutes have passed and not two minutes. The mistake is that they wrote down the hour that it was pointing to when we should be looking at the minutes because it's the minute hand. Super, so it's your turn to have a go by yourself. Hopefully you know the drill by now because we're following that same pattern. The circle sheet is um, minutes past joining up the clock face to the time. Then the semicircle sheet, you've got some clock faces and you need to write the time. The triangle sheet is where you need to draw the arrows um, on the clock face. Again, if you get to this sheet and it's too difficult for you to physically draw the arrows on, whether it's on the Word document or whether it's drawing your own clocks and that's too difficult, feel free to just get a clock from around your house, take the batteries out and um, turn it to the time that it's saved on um, next to each of these clocks. And then the square sheet is, I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. The square sheet is um, for you to explain the mistake. Well done, everyone. I know that time is getting a little bit more tricky. We've got two more lessons on time and then we're back at school. So keep up the hard work, everyone. Really excited to see the work that you send in and I will see you very soon. Bye now. <laughs>